welcome to a very wet Kylog. We're here today for the grand final of the HSI Bluegrass Spring Tour. Daniel Coyle still tops the leaderboard on 56 points, but John Floody has closed the gap to just four points between them. My Lima Morris still has 43 points. It's a very close competition, and with points and a half on offer here today, it could be anybody's game. We'll soon catch up with some of the riders once the course is ready. Nicola, you have a new horse in today's uh, Grand Prix class. Um, I actually, I did, I entered him, but uh, I'm not going to run him today as I haven't walked around the track yet, but it looks very big and just a little bit technical for him. And he's only seven and this would have been his first week stepping up to that level. So I think I might leave it for this week. Do you have Penny Lane here today? Yeah, Penny Lane is here and uh, she'll be jumping around. Do you think Tom will ask a lot of questions of the riders with it being the grand final today? Um, Tom always asks a lot of questions of the riders. They're always very fair questions, but I'd imagine that today would be no different. And uh, from here, it looks quite big anyway. So the battle's very close. At the battle's very close at the top. How do you think the riders will deal with this pressure? Um, well, the ones at the top, they're well used to the pressure anyway, so I'm sure they'll be going neck and neck and be fighting to the last. And what's your plan for the rest of the season? Will you go on to compete in some of the Premier Series or go abroad? Um, well, I can't compete in the Premier Series with my younger horses because they're only seven at the moment. Um, hopefully Puissance will be back for a few of them and uh, also I, I hope to bring them abroad as well. Daniel, you're still in the lead. What this option here? Which one are you going to go for? The first horse today uh, is really only going to be a pathfinder for me because... His first one was yesterday, so it'll be um, a big ass for him. So I'm going to jump the oxer on him, and the other three, I'll probably jump to water. How do you think the courses have progressed since? Do you think it's bigger here today at Coil Oak? Oh, yeah, it's definitely a hole, maybe two holes bigger in places. Uh, it's a lot more technical, but it has to jump it as well. So. And what's your tactics going into today's class? To get as many clears as I can. <laughs> And how did your horses travel from last night from Warrington to here today at Coilog? Yeah, they all travelled grand. Um, my did give her a wee uh, canter about this morning. She felt really good, but we'll see now in a couple of hours' time. Emily, you have two horses in today's class. Will you tell us about those? Yeah, I've got 27, which is Ali's Diamond Boy, my good horse. And then I've got 50, late 50s with Wanak. Um, Ali's Diamond Boy is my better one of the two. Um, it's a lot bigger than the usual weeks, so it's going to be a bit of a test. Where do you think problems will arise on today's track? Um, from the wall to the Liverpool and then down to the last fence. I think I'll be a little bit out of steam, so I'm going to have to get a bit more energy up and then hopefully get a clear round. You went very well in this league so far. Are you feeling confident today? Yeah, I was off for the last two weekends, so yeah, it's going to be a bit more of a difficult um, opportunity, but yeah, hopefully good. And what's your plan for the rest of the season? Um, I'm going to Fontainebleau now on the 4th of May for an international show. Then I've got Balmoral for the internationals. And then after that, we'll see. Yeah, I've got the windmill master here. Um, my other horses are just back from travelling, so they're resting this week. You've had a very successful trip abroad. Will you tell us how that went? Yeah, it went good. We were, we were in Spain for five weeks, and then we were in Italy for three. And um, it was a good experience for me and the horses. You also have Jordan Coyle looking after your home string of horses. How have they been shaping up? Yeah, they're shipping up well. Um, he's, he's doing a good job. The horses hadn't much experience at that le this level and um, he, he's brought them on in, in the spring league. And what do you think of the course here today at Coil Oak? Yeah, I think it's a tricky enough course. It's cleverly built. Um, I think the time is, is quite tight, so you have to, to keep moving. We have an option, um, three to four in, from the water, and I think if you take the, the auction... It's going to leave you tight in time, which you're going to have to make up somewhere else. And where do you think the problems will arise today? Um, I would say the last line um, will cause enough of problems. He's got a fair bit of width on the oxers today too, which, which will make it a bit harder. With 81 on the start list, do you think Manny will make a treat to the jump off? I'd say by 15, 16. Um, actually, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Tom has built a very testing track, so it'll be interesting to see how many clear. Which of the options will you go for here at number four? Uh, I'd probably go for the go for the oxer. Um, I haven't been practicing my water with, with my horses yet, so uh, I leave that uh, until later on. So um, I, at the moment, I will pr probably plan to go for number four. Yeah, yeah. And which horse do you think you have your best chance on here today to catch Daniel Coyle? Uh, well, hopefully Caballero uh, will perform good today. 
and uh, that's, that's uh, Rihi Irish All-Star isn't too tired from yesterday so we'll see how they go I only have the two horses in today so um, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll be good you must be feeling confident after a superb win uh, yesterday in Warrington. Oh, you can never be too confident in show jumping, as you know yourself. Uh, anything can happen, and you know poles fall, and you're, um, you know, you're, when you're dealing with horses, you just don't know what's going to happen. So, and where do you think we'll see the poles fall here today? Everywhere on the track, I think that um, you know he, he's he's put loads of little snooker spots in the in on the course. So I think that he get he get results from. Uh, this track definitely, and uh, I'd, I'd imagine at the time time is quite tight as well, so um, we'll have to keep an eye on that. I'm now joined by Angie Burns. Angie, you're based over in Wellington. You had a very successful uh, circuit this year. Yes, I did. I had a very good winter circuit, and I have a very nice horse now, jumping the meter sixties. I had some results in the World Cup qualifier there, and uh, I had a good year. Absolutely. We spoke to your mum in, in Cavan and she told us how your horses are produced here in Ireland and then brought over a few to compete at the higher level. How is that working out for you? That's working out very well for me. Um, I have good riders and a good system here in Ireland and um, when they come to America they're exactly what I want and they're going the way that I like. And I have some nice horses, we're doing pretty well out of it. So. We also saw an article this week in the Irish Field by Siobhan Dorr, so you're really coming a celebrity in the Irish circuit. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't say a celebrity just yet, but um, yeah, that was a nice article, actually. Siobhan wrote it for me. Um, we, we did the interview in Wellington, and she wrote it, and she's doing very well out there, too. What's your plan for the rest of the season? Will you be here in Ireland for a while, or go back to the States? Uh, my plan is to go to Europe and compete in some of the Nations Cup shows in Europe. I have to compete in Copenhagen in the Nations Cup, and some other international shows in Europe, and hopefully uh, represent Ireland in the Super League Nations Cups this year. That's my plan. What horse have you here today for the HSI Bluegrass Grand Final? Today I have a horse called Zoltair. Uh, she's an eight-year-old mare. Uh, Declan has been jumping her already in some of the Bluegrass classes. He's been doing very, very well. But I want to take her with me to Europe to go to the Nations Cup shows as a second horse for my Grand Prix horse. So I need to, a practice run for her. You have two great riders in Deck Egan and Rachel Craven. I do, they're fantastic riders and they're very hard workers and um, they're doing a really good job. They have some nice horses right now, so it works both ways, they're working hard. And what do you think of the track here today? Where do you think the problems will arise? I think the track here today asks plenty of questions. Um, I think it's just big enough. Um, the line to the water is a little bit scopy, you need plenty of stride to get there where you want to be. Uh, the combination is two oxers in it, so that's always going to take a good bit of jumping, and he has a double of verticals. And then I think the last line might actually take the most riding with that uh, skinny vertical at the very end. It might be difficult. Are you aware of the battle at the top? Who do you think will come out on top? Um... I'm aware. Um, I am never want to underestimate John Floddy at the end of the day. He, he's, he's so experienced, and he can be really fast. Um, so it's anyone's call, but that's who my money's on. Keen, you had a very su successful weekend last weekend with doing a win in Mullingar and then taking second in Clare. Yeah, it was a good weekend, as you say. First weekend back at home, jumping, so uh, it's always nice to go well. But uh, you forget about that, it's a new day now, and uh, Thomas had a tough course here today in Coilog. You have two very nice new horses. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, the horses that I have, uh, one is Da Vinci's Pride. Um, he's quite experienced. Uh, but I only have him, so it's nice to have these classes to introduce him to the next level. And um, Carl Springs is a very nice young horse. He's only eight-year-old. And again, these, these classes are enough of a test. I mean, they're not huge, but they're a great introduction to Grand Prix that are going to come during the summer. And because it's the final today, I think Tom has added some technicalities, and it wouldn't be just as user-friendly as some would be used to. And uh, I think there uh, won't be that many clears as normal. Are you talk us through today's course? Yeah, sure. He starts you off straight away big enough fence one and two in the middle and then he's giving you an option after fence three you can jump a big oxer here meter 40 or the open water if people's horses jump water well they'll probably present them to the water and if they have a doubt they might save schooling them at home and uh, just jump the oxer the downside to jumping the oxer is you have an awful long run up to fence five so the time allowed will be an issue then then your right hand back to double of verticals is very flimsy and not that much to back the horses off and that'll take some some people down Next oxer combination is normal enough and you have a very sharp bend, a left bend to the black and white New York fence. So that'll be difficult enough, that'll take a few prisoners. And then the final line is the wall, five strides to an oxer with a water tray and then a really short four to the green style at fence 13. So all in all, he's asked enough questions, he's restricted to height so he can't go massive, but out of 80 something, 
I suppose it'll be 10 or 12 clear rounds. It's going to be a very exciting class with points in half and also we have John Fluddy and Daniel Coyle uh, vying for the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, well, I'm, I suppose I'm a bit biased. John Fluddy's a good mate of mine and uh, he's an absolute genius on, 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 uh, against the clock and he really gets the most out of all the horses. He, uh, he won yesterday again in Warrington, so he needs to finish, I think, uh, fourth here and unfortunately Daniel get no points for John to win, so uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll be rooting for John. We also have given credit to young rider Daniel Coyle, though he's progressed really well through this league, which shows the benefits of the league to the riders here. Sure, he's a classy jockey, very talented, always was, and uh, he's now got some good horses under him, which has helped him along the way, so uh, he's done extremely well. And as you say, this league is good on many levels, not alone for likes of me to produce horses, but for young riders and for amateurs and everyone to have a go, so uh, that's why it gets big entries, which is also good for the shows. Tom, you've put an option on today's course, why was that? Uh, because some horses don't like water jumping, I really don't. Uh, it's very early in the season still to be causing ho- problems for horses. So anyone wants to school over water, a nice water with poles over, get them up in the air. But then anyone that doesn't want to do it has the oxer option. It's going to take a little bit longer. It's going to be probably two seconds longer to do it. So there might there might be a time problem then. But just to give them a choice. Will the time be a deciding factor here today? Uh, if they're not quick enough, it will. <laughs>